Hey guys, welcome back to Chipped or Dipped. Um, it's Jared Bryan. It's been a little bit, but I uh, just want to let you all know things have been going awesome. God has blessed us along the way. And uh, anyway, I, I've had an awesome day today. I got to hang out with my um, my father-in-law. And uh, I got to hear a cool story that I'm going to share probably on this message before this one. Um, hopefully that one will be uploaded by the time this one gets done. But I am back at the mountains. I am enjoying this area. It's pretty cool. Um, if you look at the mountains out here, you can check it out. <clears throat> but um, he's got a cool property. And I'm, I'm probably going to have a um, few more messages out um, tomorrow because I've been in the Word. Uh, I've really been in Revelation a lot because I want to get... I don't think a lot of people talk about Revelation. So that will be coming soon. But um, I just... I really just wanted to talk to you guys about uh, David and Goliath today because I was in the Word. Um, well, actually, I was with my brother um, um, Aaron. Aaron is uh, my my wife's brother. I was hanging out with him and my uh, my father in law yesterday, and <laughs> Gladiator came on. Gladiator is one of my favorite movies, and The Patriot. I just I love those type of movies, and uh, Gladiator. In that scene, um, Russell Crowe, Maximus Decimus, uh, I think Meridius or whatever, he's trying, he just won a battle, and um, he's about to get armor back. And um, the guy who won his freedom, that had he was a slave who won his freedom, he basically was giving him, um, he was showing him the wooden sword that represented him getting his freedom, because he wasn't going to need you know, an actual sword anymore. So that wooden sword was the representation, but he also was throwing him the armor and it just triggered. I was like, man, it just made me think of David trying to get the armor from Saul to go fight Goliath. But it was, it was man's armor. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, the armor of the Lord. And, uh, so, um, it's pretty cool though. Cause I just triggered things in my mind, you know? And I was like, I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty wild. So you got, I'm going to just jump in, okay? So you got two mountains on each side. You got the Philistine army and you got the Israelite army. And then in the valley, um, right between the two mountains where the armies were set up and they had camp set up, you had Goliath, a giant that came out. It was their champion, their warrior, uh, like six cubits in, in, in length and a span. So it's m larger than that. You know, he had like... Um, his spearhead was like 600 shekels of iron, um, and his uh, a shekel was like a denomination back then, or like a weight. Um, I think it was like money, but um, it also represented you know an amount. So 600 shekels of iron, and it's just the spearhead of his spear, um, and his, the I think the breastplate was it the breastplate it was like 5,000 um, shekels of brass. So you have you have this giant who's just like he even had a guy walking in front of him carrying a shield because it was so big. So you had this giant and he was defying the army of Israel and he just he was saying, You bring your champion out here, you bring your warrior out here, and y'all don't need to waste all these people's lives. You'll you basically we can just fight it out. And then if I win, you guys will be our servants. If you win, we'll be your servants. That was the situation. That was that was what Goliath was doing. So we're going to jump into it. So chapter 17, verse 3. And this is 1 Samuel 17, verse 3. And the Philistines stood on the mountain on one side, and Israel stood on the mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. So that's, yeah, that's big. His coat, he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. That's number five. So, I mean, you got a big dude here. And he's he's also, he's a big dude, but he's also got a big mouth. And, um, you know, the devil has a big mouth, too. And all of the enemies that come against you. And you got to realize that, you know, Satan is going to always, always come at you like a, like a roaring lion, like he's 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 basically, you know, whatever you hear, 
He's going to try and knock you down with words. He's going to try and knock you down with fear. He's going to try and knock you down with anything he can. And in this, you know, Old Testament is like a foreshadowing of the New Testament a lot of times. And you know, there's just some similarities. I'm just breaking down 17, you know. But um, if you go to um, 17 verses, or 1 Samuel 17 verse 10. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And I was like, oh, and then 11 said, When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. So all of them got fear struck in them. And they were greatly afraid. But, you know, Second Timothy 1.7, For God has given us a spirit... <clears throat> um, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So, you should not be afraid when the enemy comes against you. So, you can just use that verse because that's your weapon. You don't need you don't need all this extra armor as far as like man's armor. You don't need you know you don't need Saul's sword. You need you don't need man's sword. You need you need the sword of the Lord, which is the word, because the word is the, is your sword. So anyway, so Second Timothy one seven. If you're ever fearful or you're afraid of something, remember that verse. It's an easy one to remember. So number sixteen, we'll go down. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. Hmm. Well, well, Jesus was in the wilderness forty days. And he was, during the fast, and the devil was attacking him then. So this Philistine was attacking, or he was presenting himself 40 days, basically, to the Israelite army. Um, you go down to 24, and all the, is, the men of Israel, when they saw the, the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. So these guys are all still afraid. These guys, all these warriors of the people that were actually there to fight, we're all afraid. So this guy must have been pretty bad. Bad of the bone. And 26 says, And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to this man that killeth this Philistine, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? He's defying the armies of the living God. Because the Philistines believed in multiple gods. And uh, so David's saying, who's defying, this man's defying my living God? No. So David had a different kind. You already can tell David is speaking differently than these other people. These other guys are fearful, they're afraid, and they're the ones who are supposed to be fighting. David, he was tending to the sheep. The only reason he was there was because he was coming to give his brothers food because his dad sent him. His father sent him, sent him to give food to his brethren, to feed his brethren. Well, Jesus' father sent him to give uh, the living word, and that's he he sent him for our, for his brethren. So that's kind of cool. But um, anyway, so if you go down to thirty-two, and David said to Saul, "Let let no man's heart fail because of him." Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So he's saying, I'm going to go and fight. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Hey, young guys, don't don't be afraid. Don't, don't let uh, anyone tell you you can't do something. Because look at this. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and I delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. He's talking about the lion now. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. So he's already speaking it. He's already winning with the sword right now. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, 
He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord will be with thee. So he won the king's uh, he's won, he won the king's mind with his words, even though the king, Saul, didn't believe in him at first. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put, um, he put a helmet of brass. You know, the king always has the best armor, right? The king does have the best armor, so he was trying to do him a favor. He was trying to put his armor on David. He put it on upon his head, and he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he hath not proved it. When it said he has not proved it, he has not tried it, he has not wore it, he has not, um, you know, practiced with it. Um, and David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Imagine going down to the brook and he's like, he gets five smooth stones and put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Now, I don't know what script that's talking about. I don't know if David had put a script, like written down what he was going to say to Goliath when he met up with him. But a script, um, it says, I mean, you can go into that. That's uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 40. I'll read it again. And he took his staff in his hand, which is probably a shepherd's staff, not even really a, a big weapon against the Goliath. And chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and put them in a shepherd's bag which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Uh, the scrip thing could be something different. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, it kind of makes sense. But you guys can look that up. You can look up what a scrip is. Um, I will look it up further. But I just think that was kind of interesting. In a scrip, you know, he could have been, you know, pr providing himself... You know, he could have. He was like, uh, Saul's armor is not working. Uh, that's man's armor. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get the word. I'm gonna get girded up. I'm gonna get stuff to fight. Stuff from the living God. But um, anyway. So uh, and the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth. And ruddy and a fair countenance, so he would look like a young, uh, good-looking youth that wasn't really ready for war. He wasn't like tried in the fire. It looked like, I guess, to Goliath. And the Philistine said unto David, "Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves?" And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Well, too bad your gods aren't the living God. And the Philistine said to David, "This is forty-four now." Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David answered right back, and he said, Then, then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom that thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And 47, And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. So he was fearless. Hasted meaning he, he did it hurriedly. He ran right towards him. No fear. He just ran right at him. He went towards the Philistine army. So basically, on fit, if you go to 50, it says, So David prevailed. Um, over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. There was no sword in his hand. A sling and a stone. So he defeated him with the rock. The rock. Who else is also called the rock? That's Jesus. The living word. The living word is the rock. It only took one stone. 
So anyway, I thought that was kind of cool too. But um, anyway, it's just a lot of cool things that broke down. And this just all happened from seeing some armor on Gladiator the other day. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I got into it. But actually after, after that, you know, he actually, he didn't, he had said, I would, I will cut off your head. Basically he had told him, you know, I will give your head to the carcasses. And, um, he didn't even have a sword on him. He took, he took Goliath's sword and took it out after he had knocked him down with the stone and took it and cut off his head. So if you realize that he, he won the battle before the battle started, it said, um, and all, and this is number uh, one, or this is uh first Samuel 17 verse 47. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you in, he will give you into our hands. So the battle is already, or it's already won. The Lord has already won. So just remember that when you're going into battle, because you can use these verses and you can defeat anything you're trying to come up against because you've already won. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. After that, then the, then the Israelites chased the Philistines down and they started running and scattering and fleeing. And, uh, you know, David went on to, uh, get rewarded and he, uh, you know, you guys can read further, but I just am sharing that story right now because that was what was in my head right now. But you guys have a great day. Um, remember, don't get chipped, get dipped. All right, you guys have a blessing.